Some people get rich through hard work and extreme talent. You could also rob a bank, or you could get really lucky, like the people we're about to meet in this video. Here's 10 extremely lucky discoveries that made people filthy rich. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe so you can discover some super interesting information every day. Amazing. Number 10. The Wall of Coins in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, the walls are made of candy. In this house in Winburg, Pennsylvania, the walls were made of money. It had been abandoned for 20 years when the children of the couple that had lived there decided to take a friend to go see what was inside. Within minutes of entering the house, they found a small pile of coins on the floor by a wall. As they explored further, they found a hole in the wall. Recalling a distant childhood rumor about their parents storing loose change in the wall, they opened up the wall. An unbelievable number of coins flowed out of the wall, like a waterfall of cash. Once they counted all the coins, it added up to $8,500. However, because many of the coins were rare collector's items, minted between 1793 and 1857, the real value of their haul was around 200,000 US dollars. Who needs a bank when you've got a money wall? Number 9. Things dug up in Australia. If you're watching in Australia, it may be worth investing in a metal detector and a shovel, because you can find some seriously valuable stuff underground down under. An anonymous prospector was playing with his metal detector in Ballarat, Victoria, when the alarm sounded. He dug through 23 inches of dirt until he saw the unmistakable glint of gold. As he dug, the nugget of gold got bigger and bigger. It turned out that our man had found a giant nugget weighing 12 pounds with a value of around $300,000. The strange thing is, this area had been explored many times before. This record-breaking nugget would have been missed by hundreds of other prospectors. Australia was also home to the Royal One Opal. It was found by an Australian miner called Bobby, who, similar to Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon, was one day away from retirement when he found it. He found it under a foot of dirt at the bottom of the same mine where he had worked for his whole career. Its estimated worth is around $750,000. I'm sure Bobby enjoyed his retirement after that. Number 8. The Third Imperial Egg an anonymous man in the Midwest of the US was scraping a modest living by buying metal objects and selling them for scrap. For $14,000, he purchased a golden orb decorated with gems, hoping to make a $500 profit when he sold it on. However, he decided to get it professionally appraised first. It turned out this lump of unwanted metal was actually the third imperial egg, one of the 50 original Russian Fabergé eggs. Only 42 of them were believed to have survived the Bolshevik Revolution, and this one was thought to have been destroyed. Our man sold it to an art collector for a staggering $33 million. That's a lot more than the $500 he thought he was going to make. Spare a thought for the guy who sold it to him for $14,000 though. That's got to hurt. The moral of this story is always know what you're dealing with. Number 7. Mo Money, Mo Problems This is a story of how greed can cause a large fortune to turn into a small fortune pretty quickly. It's also another story of a wall full of money. In 2008, builder Bob Kitts was smashing up a bathroom for his old school friend, Amanda Reese, when he found two large medicine chests hidden in a wall. He opened the chests, and to his surprise, they were full of envelopes. Each one had a $50 bill in it. The envelopes were addressed to the P. Dunn News Agency. All in all, there were $182,000 in there. The two old friends were initially thrilled, but that's where their trouble began. Reese offered Kitts 10% of the money, but he wanted 40% and sued her. The estate of the P. Dunn News Agency found out about it, and they wanted a piece too. Eventually, a judge split the money between Reese, Kitts, and 21 descendants of Mr. Patrick Dunn. I bet the two friends wished they'd kept their mouths shut now. Number 6. 1974 D. Penny when he died, a Denver Mint employee left his son Randy a small coin collection. Randy kept this handful of coins in a sandwich bag, and after he moved from Denver to San Diego, the bag stayed in his car for over a month. Nearly 20 years later, Randy came across the coin bag again, and decided to show it to a professional appraiser. The expert was impressed by a particular silver penny, and after a bit of research, found that this was a 1974 D penny. This penny was made of aluminium and was part of a test batch of only 10 coins. It was thought that all 10 were destroyed after they were found and they wouldn't work in vending machines, but this one still remained. 
It was valued at $250,000. Unfortunately for Randy, the government got involved, saying the coin was actually their property. After a legal dispute, the rare coin is now displayed in a museum. Now that we're halfway through, let's have a trivia question. Take a look at these photos of equally amazing discoveries. What are they? Stick around till the end of the video and see if you're correct. Number five, rare paintings. What's in your attic? Mine's full of a load of junk. So was the attic of Norwegian businessman Christian Nikolai Mustad, or so he thought. In 1908, Christian bought what he thought was a painting by Vincent van Gogh. However, art experts at the time told him they'd actually bought a forgery, because it was not signed. Incensed, Christian banished the painting to his attic, never to be seen again. When Christian died, his descendants discovered the painting and found out more about it. In 2011, art experts decided that this painting, called Sunset at Montmajor, was the real thing after all, and it was worth around $50 million. While not as famous as Van Gogh, Martin Johnson Heed is renowned in art circles for his flower paintings. In the 1990s, an Indiana man was playing Masterpiece, a board game about art. One of the questions in the game showed a picture of a painting that looked remarkably similar to one that was on his wall, covering up a hole. It had been there for years and cost next to nothing. Curious, he contacted some art experts. It turned out this whole cover was a lost painting by Heed and was worth $1.25 million. You can buy a lot of filler with that. Number four, action comics number one. What is it about walls? So far we've found coins and treasure chests hidden in them. Here's another one. Action Comics number no. one was published in 1938 and is the holy grail for comic book collectors as it features the debut of Superman. Only around 100 exist and a top condition copy is worth more than $2 million. David Gonzalez from Minnesota bought an old house for $10,000 with a view of renovating it, selling it and making a bit of cash. While he was smashing down one of the walls, he came across a dusty old comic hidden in the wall insulation. Of course, it was Action Comics number one. It wasn't in great condition, and David actually tore the cover during an argument with his wife's aunt a few days after finding it. David put the comic up for auction, eventually landing $175,000 for it. Not a bad profit on a $10,000 investment. Now where's my sledgehammer? I've got some walls to smash. Number three, a hoard, not a hammer. You know what it's like when you can't find something? Annoying, isn't it? In 1992, when Peter Watling, a farmer in Suffolk, England, lost his hammer, he asked a friend, Eric Laws, who had a metal detector, to help him find it. Eric was scanning one of his friend's fields when the detector alarm sounded. It wasn't his hammer, though. It was a small silver coin. Intrigued, Eric dug some more. He found a gold necklace and enough coins to fill two shopping bags. He called the archaeologists in after that. The Hoxon Hoard, as it became known, was a massive deposit of Roman riches, valued at around $15 million. They found a chest containing 15 gold bracelets, a silver bust of a woman, and over 1,000 gold coins. Most of the find is now on display in the British Museum. Eric was rewarded with $2.3 million, which he shared with Peter. I don't know if they ever found the hammer, though. Number 2. The Declaration of Independence a man in Pennsylvania bought a painting at a garage sale for $4. He hated the painting, but liked the frame, so removed the picture to put a new one inside. However, under the painting was an old document. This turned out to be a mint condition copy of the Declaration of Independence from 1776, one of only 25 that were made at the time. He sold it for $2.4 million. The same document sold again in 2000 for over $8 million. It's not such a rare story though. Michael Sparks from Nashville purchased a yellow copy of the Declaration from a thrift shop and because he liked the look of it. He paid $2.48. Intrigued by his purchase, he decided to get it looked at by an expert. It turned out Michael had bought a lost 1820 copy of the Declaration commissioned by John Quincy Adams, one of only 36 existing copies. When he sold it, Michael netted just under half a million bucks. Before I reveal the most amazing example, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to this channel. We upload amazing fact filled videos every day, so don't miss out on learning some amazing new information. Also, make sure to hit that bell icon to be part of the notification squad. Number one, Coke shares. Do you ever go to garage sales? After you hear this story, you might want to go more often. 
In 2008, California man Tony Moran paid $5 for a box stuffed with random documents. When he sorted through the papers, he found a stock certificate for 1,625 shares in the Palmer Oil Company, issued in 1924. Since the certificate was issued, Palmer merged with another company, who had merged and merged again, until they were bought by the Coca-Cola Company. Tony's lawyers told him he now had 1.8 million shares in Coke worth around $130 million. This would make Tony the largest non-institutional shareholder in Coca-Cola. Coke obviously was not too pleased. They dismissed Tony's demands, calling them absurd, and called in the lawyers. Unfortunately, Tony never got to live his dream of running Coca-Cola when he died in 2010. His family carried on the case, but were unsuccessful. Apparently, Tony's share certificate was not the real thing. Now back to those vibrant orange organ looking alien stone creatures. What are they? And why are they relevant to this video? Well, these are known as Pyura chiliensis, a sort of living rock. They're filter feeding sea creatures that live on the rocky coasts of Chile and Peru. Of course, their meat is a delicacy as locals eat them raw or cooked with salad because apparently they're delicious. Interestingly, they're born male before developing female organs, which means they can breed with themselves. So why are they in this video? Well, if you happen to come across a colony and realize they're more than just simple beach rocks, then you've won a mini lottery. Specimens are expensive and can reach hundreds of dollars at high-end restaurants. However, be aware not to eat too much of it because their meat contains an abnormally high concentration of vanadium, which it filters from surrounding seawater and can be harmful to humans if we eat too much of it. Have you ever found anything valuable at a garage sale or hidden in a wall? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.